Ahsoka is another story where you can step in at any point and not feel that you necessarily have to have seen everything. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Sector for Nerds. I'm Ryan Brower. Today, we're here to chat about Ahsoka Part 5. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. We're getting right into it today. Man, this is like... <laughs> Dave Filoni 100% knows what he's doing with Star Wars. This episode pretty much personifies why I want him in charge of Star Wars. Like, everything going forward. Like, I don't care what Star Wars content is being made, I want it to be done by Dave Filoni. I want quality over quantity. This is quality. And yeah, you know what? Maybe if you're not into like Clone Wars or Rebels, this may not resonate with you as much, but this resonated with me. Dave is the one who knows how to tell Star Wars stories better than anybody else. Everything he does has a purpose to it. You can sit there and just think for hours and hours like, okay, what was he trying to do here? What was he doing here? What was the purpose? And that's what this episode had me doing because after it was done, I'm sitting there like, but was that actually Anakin that was talking to her? Was that like the force trying to like train Ahsoka, you know, to help her do what she needs to do? Was it like a figment of Ahsoka's imagination and her just going through her own trials in her mind? It gives you a lot to think about. But one of the big parts of this episode was Anakin and Ahsoka being in the world between worlds. It was like the first half of the episode was all dedicated to this. Now, granted, there were moments where they would cut away to like what Hera and Jason were doing. And I'm like, no, don't go back. Seeing Hayden Christensen back as Anakin, him saying snips, him being in the freaking Clone Wars outfit from like seasons one through three, the beginning of season three. All my brother could talk about afterwards when we were finished watching the episode was how much he wanted to see a live action Clone Wars series. And my response to that would be, yeah, but only if Dave is doing it. Because I think he's the one who would know exactly what to do with this, whereas everybody else, I think, would F it up. But man, like, I, I sit here watching this, and I I'm looking at, like, you know, younger Ahsoka, and the shout out to the actress who, who played her. She did a phenomenal job. I loved sitting there trying to figure out, like, okay, where are they at at what time? Because at the be the first battle that they were on, they said, like, this is one of our first battles together. So that kind of automatically made me assume Teth. And he said, gotta keep up, which is something he tells her during that battle. Another line that stood out to me is when Anakin says to Ahsoka, when my master taught me, we were the keepers of the peace, but now I have to train you to be a soldier, which is so ironic because you think back to what Mace Windu says in Attack of the Clones, we were trained to be keepers of the, we we're keepers of the peace, not soldiers. And in a way, the Jedi basically do become that, right? And then they cut to another battle and there were like some Twi'leks there. So I'm thinking like, oh, okay, maybe this is Ryloth that they're, that they're on. And then we see freaking Captain Rex there. Like, oh my gosh. The shot where Anakin walks into the smoke and they just show the Vader silhouette. Like, oh, that was so good. And then the moment when I see Anakin pull out a lightsaber, I'm like, but that, that's not his lightsaber. I mean, it is his lightsaber, but that's not Anakin's lightsaber. And it turns red. I'm like, oh my gosh. I was definitely geeking out at certain moments in this episode, man. It was crazy. And there's a moment where Ahsoka kicks Anakin the same way that she kicked Maul in uh, Clone Wars Season 7. It was the same move. I do hope we see Anakin again, maybe as like a force ghost this time, perhaps. But yeah, like seeing them on the Siege of Mandalore there with the Mandalorians, like, I'm sitting like, those are Mandalorians, like, okay, they're going up against Mandos in this one. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's the Siege of Mandalore, because like, I picked up on it based on the, the Mandalorians wearing the, the red helmets and everything, and then they showed Ahsoka in that, you know, season seven attire, the Siege of Mandalore attire, and then we got the clones with the orange helmets, and I'm like... This is incredible. And I'm sure that there's going to be people, like the critics of this show are going to be like, oh, it's just fan service. You're just giving out fan service. And I'm sitting there like, guys, fan service is a good thing. Is it not the goal of a show to please the fan base? Like, I don't, I've never understood that argument, like, for goodness sake. Like I said, if I had it my way, I'm canceling every Star Wars project that you have right now and just let Dave do his thing. I don't care if we only get one show a year. I don't care if we get, like, one movie every three years. I don't care. His version of Star Wars, which ultimately, I believe, is George Lucas's version of Star Wars, is the best version. 
version, in my opinion. This show, this Ahsoka series, is already up there as, like, one of my favorite Star Wars projects they've ever done. Clone Wars and Rebels are my top two, and I, I feel like Ahsoka is very quickly crawling into my top three. But that was just the first half of this episode. The other half of it was very much focusing on Jason, Syndulla, and, like, him kind of discovering his powers. We get Hera in there. Shout out to Carson Tava for distracting the Rebel fleet when he did. There was a part of me that's like, when Ahsoka's talking with the Purgle, I sat there and said out loud, I swear if the New Republic Fs this up, I'm gonna be so mad. Add it to the list of things that they've messed up. But to their credit, they didn't. Good job, guys. Mon Mothma did almost screw this up, though. Have you found any proof of Thrawn's return? How about, I don't know, maybe we're still looking. Maybe this is a bit more of a complicated investigation than what the Senators and the New Republic are used to. This isn't just, oh, we figure this out in one day, go back to our comfortable bedrooms and sleep again and wake up and it's a whole different day. No, this takes time and patience. I did sit there, like, saying out loud when I watched this episode, or oh, the, is, are they gonna go into the Purgle's mouth and that's how they get out of there? And I'm like, all right, I can, I can buy that. There was a part of me, though, that went like, okay, wait a minute, if these X-Wings are about to make the journey too, didn't they say earlier in the episode that they were running on emergency fuel? So I don't think that would have been the best idea. Though I would have liked to have seen Hera and the ghosts go along, but as Hera said, you know, Jason's too young to travel to other galaxies, you know, understandable. Mother taking care of her kid, you know what I'm saying? And as I kind of figured, they weren't going to show anything with Sabine in this episode. That's going to be saved for next episode. You know what this episode did is it brought out the kid inside of me. And not saying like the other Ahsoka episodes didn't, haven't done that, because I think they have. But this one in particular, I think, just like with all the Clone Wars flashbacks, I just sat there like a, a kid ready to open presents on Christmas Day. I don't know what else to say, you guys, other than just I'm in awe of this show, I'm in love with this show. This is Star Wars to me. I think next week we're gonna get Grand Admiral Thrawn, I'm like pretty certain of that. And I think we will probably see Sabine reunite with Ezra, unless episode six, I mean the only thing I could see of the reason why we wouldn't get that is because now Ahsoka has to find both Ezra and Sabine, so maybe the next episode is them still searching for Ezra and Sabine, like I could totally see that. But otherwise I think if there was ever a time to pull the trigger to have Ezra, S Sabine reunite to show Thrawn, I think next week is the time. But I think one thing that I've kind of noticed about this show so far, because we haven't seen Thrawn yet, that to me makes me feel like, I feel like the big juicy stuff that we're going to be getting with Thrawn, they're not only trying to save for the last few episodes, but I think they're trying to save a bit of that juice for this Dave Filoni movie that we're going to be getting. Because ultimately, I do believe, and I've believed this for the longest time, that Thrawn is going to be the main villain of set movie. And this is like before they even announced that they were doing a Dave Filoni movie. Like, I know there were reports like, oh, they're going to maybe do like a crossover event or something like that. And I always said like, okay, if they're going to do a crossover event, that's like the perf between like Ahsoka, Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian. If they were going to do a crossover event the biggest, like, threat that you could have in there would be Thrawn. And I think that's what they're saving him for. And it makes sense, too. So, you guys, uh, that's gonna wrap us up for this week. I could talk about this episode all day, honestly, just because of how much I loved it. But I think for now, that's going to wrap us up. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought in this episode. Also, vote on my poll as well. I put up a poll last night saying like, hey, what'd you guys think of this episode and why'd you give it an A, you know? Look, obviously, if, if those don't want to give it an A, want to give it a little bit of a lower grade, like, obviously, that's your opinion. Just, you know, let me know what you thought of the episode. For anybody that didn't like the episode, I'm very curious as to why. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what you guys think. Thank you all so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video with others to help support the channel. If you guys could do me a favor as well and head over to my uh, other YouTube channel called Top 10 Character Moments, that would be great as well. I'll leave a link in the description below. I will see you guys next time. Ahsoka is another story where you can step in at any point and not feel that you necessarily have to have seen everything. Ah!